Hello, I'm Lisa Logan. I want to sing for you and I want to tell you the story of a miracle. And it's actually, originally I recorded it on the Mother's Day tape for just a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, one week ago. And, uh, but I don't know that all of you watched that tape, so I'm going to tape it again today. And I'm saying hello to you. I'm so glad to see you. May I sing? Then we will have our public service announcement, and then we will have our advertisement. And I have pulled out a picture of myself out of the past in my office, so I thought, okay. Enough, enough. Let's just do it, shall we? This song stays in my heart, and uh, it's our song. It is. I changed the words and made it ours. Sometimes I feel like a childless mother. Sometimes I feel just like a childless mother. Sometimes I feel like a childless mother a long way from home. Oh, Lord, I'm such a long way from home. Sometimes I feel like a forsaken parent. Oh, sometimes I feel like a forsaken parent. Sometimes I feel like a forsake, forsaken parent. Lord, I'm such a long way from home, oh, Lord, I'm such a long way from home. <sighs> this is our public service announcement. There you are. There we go. Whoop. See, when you move in front of the camera, it goes the opposite way. Eventually, maybe a year from now, I'll get really good at this. If you are thinking about suicide, and you must believe me, almost every single one of us does, it isn't the answer. But because our pain is so great as a forsaken parent, yes, we do think about taking our own life. So, if, if you're also having anxiety a bit, but please don't, just know that you're not alone about the suicide. You're not alone. Anxiety attacks are next, and anxiety attacks happen when your heart begins to race and then the secret is that you think what if what if I have a heart attack what if what if someone catches me and sees me what if this happens to me in public when I was about 35 long time ago half my life ago well more than half my life ago uh, Oh yeah, I had an, once I had an anxiety attack in a big, huge, enormous drugstore. Ah, uh, but let me tell you what they are. Medication, but if your doctor has put you on medication for them,
go ahead and take it. Um, but I've worked with hundreds of people over the years. That's my dog barking. Uh, and uh, I'm so glad that he's alive. He has diabetes, yes he does. He gets a shot twice a day, but he's alive and he's fine. He's back to normal and my little girl dog, Peaches, he's tweaked the boy. Peaches is uh, back on her eye drops because her eye got all red again, so don't know, but it's okay. I don't mind giving her eye drops for the rest of her life, which is what the vet said. She said I have the best woman vet. She said, uh, you know, she really may be on eye drops the rest of her life, and that's okay. I don't care. I'm just, I'm just so glad they're both okay now. Okay. Um, when you're having an anxiety attack, what happens when you say, what if? Those are the magic words. What if I die? What if something bad happens? You scare yourself. First time I ever had an anxiety attack, I was down in Monterey, California, living, of course. I lived there for a long time. And uh, uh, we were all watching a, a program about four different people who, three, three people who had uh, been told that they had terminal cancer. And and there was a black minister who was told that he had, there was a young father, uh, I suppose a woman, and a black man who was, uh, am I supposed to say African Americans? And it's okay, I want to do what's right. I don't want to offend any of you. Anyway, a black man who was a minister and who found out, you know, I just felt a little bit of crying. He, he passed away years and years ago now, but for some reason I became very attached to him, and I began, my heart began to beat, and then I said, oh my gosh, what is this? What, what if, what if this causes me to have a heart attack? What if, okay, the minute you start, start saying, what if, you're making it worse. Because what you're doing is you're making your uh, adrenaline in your body pump around all over the place. There is a book called Hope and Help for Your Nerves by a woman doctor who has since passed on. But I wrote her a big fan letter. And I called it a fan letter. I'd never written a fan letter and said, Dear Dr. Weeks, thank you so much. I felt like I was sitting on her lap as I read it. What a nurturing woman. And uh, anyway, so, hope and help for your nerves. The author's name is Dr. Claire, C-L-A-I-R-E, Weeks, W-E-E-K-E-S. And the book has been around for so long now that you'll probably have to order it on Amazon in order to get it. I guess everybody orders everything on Amazon, but you can still get it. It should not ever be taken off the market. And uh, I used to carry it around with me. I only read the first 30 or 40 pages, because once I understood what was happening, I just went, okay, oh, itchy nose. It happens on this side of my studio. And this is the foo-foo side. Anyway, Dr. Weeks. And my aunt, my aunt got that book to me. She found out finally what I was going through. She said it'll be there tomorrow. She lived in Southern California. I lived in Northern California. I think they must have hired a plane to fly it out. I'm serious. They, they were very, very good to me, my aunt and uncle. Okay, this is a commercial. You've heard the service, the, sir, the, uh, public service announcement. This is a commercial. This is me. Yeah. Okay. If you notice, that's me sitting at my desk. And you will notice I did, to be honest, you know that I've done this. I, I tried to take my name off of all the diplomas. So if that looks a little bit smudgy to you, that's why. I loved my office, beautiful office. Now I love my studio, 
don't you think this is beautiful? It was all nothing but big doors in it before. I think it's beautiful. I certainly worked on it hard and long enough. Hi, I'm Lisa Logan. I'm a psychotherapist in private practice. Oh, you don't know what this picture was for. Ha! Ah, this is because I'm letting you know that uh, I would be happy to see you, your adult child, your spouse, you and your spouse, you and a family member, you and your adult child, you and your adult in-law, anyone that you would like me to, uh, to work with. And we'll probably be doing it over Skype. My hourly rate is $100. And uh, it's just, I, th I don't even think that's as much as I used to charge. So when I, but I'm not paying for office space here. That doesn't matter. That isn't what it's about. I just want to keep you here and help you as much as I can. But you know that if you order the kit of Silent Speak, where you're going to be, you and your adult child will be answering uh, questions back and forth to each other, that you get a free hour of counseling. And you get to choose to spend that free hour of counseling with you alone, with you and your adult child, with your adult child. I'll be doing uh, a promo. <laughs> I think I'm hot stuff right now. I'll be doing uh, an advertisement for that very soon. So anyway, this is what I looked like in my office. I thought that was a good way to, to get you started. And that was 10 years ago. Not bad. Not bad. My hair was longer. That was 10 years ago. That was my uh, Oak World Top Desk. You know that I am using another name. And I don't apologize to you for that. So, but these are all my licenses and all of my uh, certificates of doing things. Actually, I have about 15 more, and I don't know where they are. And I didn't ever, I never went into my waiting room and took a picture of them. So, okay. But, but the reason that I used another name, Lisa Logan, is a beautiful name. I think I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I really like it, uh, is because I'm protecting especially my grandchildren and my and my daughter and my son-in-law. I think that I have a responsibility to try to protect their identity as much as possible. And if my name were out there, I've even found my daughter by looking at my own name. So I don't want to do that. And I know that you all understand that. I have, other than that, I have no need at all to use another name. My name is good. I like it almost as, as well as Lisa Logan. For those of you who recognize me from the past, because I've taught a lot of college courses, and I've had radio talk show, talk shows. I was a radio talk show host where people called me, although yeah, I had my picture out in newspapers back then. Um, for any of you who do recognize me, please respect my need to keep my name private for my daughter, especially my grandchildren. And But you're welcome to write to me. My email address is Forsaken Parents, that's a plural, Forsaken Parents at gmail.com. Okay? Let's get started. Do you know that the other day, Am I looking okay? I look okay. The other day, I just said, I think I'm done now. This was day before yesterday. And when I looked at it, when I got in the house and I began to upload it to YouTube, the video, I looked at it and I was 10 seconds shorter than the day before. I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. This is the lovely couple that we're going to be talking about, the miracle that happened. Okay. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, I love them. I haven't met him. Whoops. Him, him. No, him. Yeah, see, it's, it's all backwards. 
I haven't met her husband, but I've, I've met, I haven't met her face to face, but, uh, and I think the world of her. What a sweetheart. She's a grandma. And, okay. And therein lies our miracle. I want you to know that I myself, since I began this, throughout my life I've had miracles. And what a miracle is, is something that you absolutely know is a gift from God. So, yes, I have had many, many miracles. And I've always been so grateful. This is a miracle that happened to this lovely woman and her husband. I'll show you. Aren't they beautiful? I love her. I don't know him, but he looks like somebody I would really love a lot. Okay, so she has a granddaughter, and I think she has other grandchildren too. And we're not going to give this grandchild or her grandparents or her daughter, this woman's daughter, a name, because they don't need to have a name. God knows who they are. And uh, she, she was really feeling badly. And a few weeks ago, I talked about all of you getting a doll or holding a pillow. I did it last night. I did it last night. And I hadn't done it in a long time, for years and years. But I remember that I had told you all so I took a pillow, I don't have one to show you right here, and held it against my stomach because my inner child, remember the three parent adult? Here we are. Remember these nice people that are inside of us? The parent is the part of us that nurtures. There are two parts to the parent. Nurtures and also criticizes makes suggestions about what you really ought to be doing. And then the child is two parts of you. These are ego states, like Sigmund Freud in the last century, or before the two centuries ago, talked about the id, ego, and superego. These are very similar, but much easier to understand. So this is our parent ego state that nurtures, when I say what a lovely woman she is, on being in my nurturing parent. And that I like her husband, I don't know. But how could I not? They just look lovely. And, uh, and she is lovely. She writes beautiful letters to me. And we know whenever I say letter, I mean email. And my email address is forsakenparents at gmail.com. Okay. And uh, this is our child ego state. Our child ego state is part of it. It's two parts. Part of it is the part of us that uh, has emotions. And I was hurting last night. And uh, so I decided to take my child out. I haven't done this in so long. Writing all, the, all of this, being with all of this, especially because I'm at the end of my book now, Ah, uh, it's gotten hard. It has. It's painful. A uh, little hair flew in my mouth. So I took my child out, my own inner child, put her out here in front of me about two or three feet away, and I said, sweetheart, I'm in my nurturing parent. As I talked to her, and I said, honey, baby, and I can see her. And I said, what's wrong? And she told me, because I've just recently written a letter, and it was painful to write that letter. Uh, and she began to just let it pour out and pour out. So I said, come here, I want to hold you. And I felt her little arms, I'm not crazy, you will too. I sensed her little arms, and I held, but I held a, a pillow that was on the couch, and I held it. and. I just comforted myself, so, and it helped, it helped a lot. I want you all to do it too. The minute you begin to hurt, 
over your children, your adult child. You're in right then, you're in your, your own child. Because where we cry from is a little girl or a little boy. And don't worry, when I was at Soledad Prison, working with the men there, uh, I would have them do the same thing. These big burly men who were the president of the Hells Angels and, and the Black Panthers and the Mexican Mafia. I had all the leaders of the prison in my, in my groups that I did for them. And they would sit there and they'd say, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to do this? And I said, honey, just try it, come on. So they did, and you know, pretty soon they'd be rocking. And what they told me was that they rocked. They began to rock in their cells alone, and it comforted them because it was a horrible thing to be in prison. The crimes they had committed were horrible. I'm not saying that, but they're still living human beings. And my job was to help them I, the way I saw. It wasn't a job, I was doing my internship for my uh, master's degree. Okay, so the child has two parts. The part that has our emotions and the part that has, yeah, the part that acts like everything's okay, has good manners. That's the little actor part of us. When, when <laughs> the last time, I didn't get a ticket, but an officer did stop me. And at the end of our talking, I, s I said, oh yeah, what I did, it wasn't very long ago. I was very sick, I had pneumonia. I didn't know I had pneumonia. I went to the doctor's office again, because I said, I'm real sick, but I hadn't gotten there yet. And when I got there, she said, you had pneumonia. Okay. It surprises me, because pneumonia doesn't feel like I thought pneumonia would feel. But in the meantime, I had made a right turn to go to her office, and it was on a one-way street going the other way, and I turned right into a policeman. <laughs> oh, good. That's the right way to do it. And uh, so he put his lights on, and I backed up and went back to where I'd come from, and then he, of course, he pulled me over. And uh, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call an ambulance for you, and I said, my doctor's office is a block away. So he said, okay, but I feel like I shouldn't just leave you to go on your own. But what I said, and I meant it, but it was my child. I said, you're a very good police officer. Thank you very much. And uh, I was in my acting child, although I did mean it. He could have given me a ticket easy as far. Okay, so, so I did it myself last night. It sounds crazy to you. I encourage you to do it. Anytime you're hurting, take a pillow, put it against this part of your body, especially right down here where your solar plexus is, and push. But with a pillow, it's gentler. You can push with your hands, but it really helps to take a soft pillow on your couch and push it in. It will comfort you right away because that is the home of your small inner child and that will help you and comfort you and you need to be comforted. Okay, so this woman was hurting a lot. I talked about uh, a lot about healing your inner child and that you could buy a doll, you could do anything. She went out to look for a doll who looked like her granddaughter. What are the chances of finding a doll that looks like your granddaughter or your grandson. It just won't happen. But it did. Look at this. This is not her child. This is the doll. And I'm going to show you a picture of her child, her uh, her granddaughter, in just a minute. But look at this. This is what God's up to with us. I mean, that looks like, at first when I got this picture, I blew it up and, and laminated it. I have a laminating machine that just doesn't quit. And uh, I thought, oh, that's a picture of a granddaughter. It's not. Look, except I covered up her granddaughter's face. 
here. That's her granddaughter. Is that amazing? Look at here. It's amazing. What a precious child. Oh, she's so adorable. The reason that I covered her face up is because I don't want I don't want uh, her identity to be out. That's not right of us. So, not now. We'll see how it changes in the future. So, so back to this little doll. Only it's not this doll is a size four toddler, four T. So I guess that's like the size of a, a four-year-old child. And uh, amazing. So she said to the woman, I see that this doll is $50, and I don't have $50. I don't have that much. Would you consider bringing the price down? And the woman said, no, we don't do that. So she said what she did was she just said, I need that doll. And I'm just going to sit down. I don't know what to do. So she sat down in the chair, and I guess in about a half an hour or so, someone walked in and went over to the counter. And the woman at the counter explained to her, to this woman who turned out to be the owner of this store, she explained to her what had happened with our friend, our fellow forsaken parent. And so the owner of the store came up to her and said, I know you want that doll, don't you? And she said, yes. And so she said, I'll sell her to you for $15 instead of 50 Can you do that? Uh, beautiful, lovely gift from God. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Anyway, one last look. Isn't that something? Listen, I try to tell you the miracles that happen as, as we go along in this. You're certainly welcome to write to me and tell me what your miracles are. I never... See, the thing is, when we hurt this way, we come closer to whoever it is that you call God. We all love the same God. Please don't be angry with me. We do love the same God, and uh, we just give God a different name for each of our kinds of religions. It's okay. It's okay. Oop. <laughs> don't be angry. Just if you don't believe that, and it's perfectly okay if you don't, just, uh, just say I'm... I'm wrong. It's okay. But don't be angry. And don't stop coming. Okay. I love you so much. I've wanted to come because I don't know that all of you watched the Mother's Day tape. And I wanted you to see this because it's such a beautiful... These were all small. I made them big. But isn't that... Isn't that just quite miraculous? So, she has this little dolly now, big doll, and she keeps it close. I care about all of you so much. I sure do. And I'm so grateful that we're here and that you're watching more and more of you all the time. I thank you. It really is time for me to start saying, uh, if you want me to do... Uh, therapy with you, with your family, I do, and uh, I won't ever turn you away. You need to know that I won't. My heart would not allow me to do that. I'm much like the woman that owned the store. Lovely woman. That was a, that's a lovely story. And, uh, but it's time where I have to start making money. Not because this is costing me money. It's already cost me money. I'm done with that part. But because I truly need to start advertising. We need to have more people. They're in so much pain. And what, what you all say is, Lisa, 
you're, you seem to understand what I'm going through better than anybody else. Well, I do because I've been through it. Of course I understand it. And had I not been through it, I promise you, I did not have the compassion and I would have been looking for what you did wrong to cause this to happen. Well, where I learned about that we haven't done anything, we've made mistakes through the way, but we haven't done anything to deserve the treatment that we're receiving from our adult child and our sons or daughters-in-law. So we don't deserve it. And I say that emphatically now. It's true, but I wouldn't have known it. Not really, if I hadn't gone through it myself. So, I'm grateful. I am grateful that I went through all this pain. I am grateful. Because it's allowed me to help you. I need to get the word out to more people. Donations at ForsakenParents at gmail.com are very welcome. And I have a PayPal account that I will uh, have you put any money that you want to send me. You're welcome to do that. But we need, we, you guys, we have to do this. We have to let other people know. It's, it's not, it's going very fast, but it could be reaching thousands of people. And I want that to happen. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to start saying, you got to help me, it's time. And so I've got all these things, I'm going to have an ad every, every time I do a video. You're going to hear a commercial. Today it was about my ability to see you and whoever you want me to see you with or, or just see your adult child. It's okay. And that if you happen to, and that costs $100 an hour, but if you happen to want to buy the kit called Silent Speak, I'll tell you what, I'll advertise that. I'll bring it in here and all of its parts the next time that I do a video which will be tomorrow or the next day. And uh, I'm going to be finishing up that, that other video that I started about the letter that one of, our, one of our precious women that are with us wrote to her son-in-law. So, so I'm going to finish that. I've, re I've gotten several notes from you, and I appreciate it. I love hearing from you. Okay. I feel done. Consider, if you will, any donation at all. And I suppose, how do you work it? I don't know. I'll, I tried to call PayPal because I've had this account. They take, they take money out of my personal account every month, but I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, um, I, oh, and I tried to call them and took all day long and I still haven't gotten through. I'll talk to another fellow that He's just gotten in touch with me, and he's, I knew him 20 years ago. He really knows how to do all this. Okay, that's enough. I've been thinking out loud, solving my problems. I love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless all of us. God bless that little grandchild. God bless that grandmother and that grandfather. Their story, if I told it to you, would be your story. They helped their daughter raise that child. And now they don't get to see her anymore. That's painful. I'm a crying baby today. I'm a crying. It's my child. I'll talk to her as soon as I say goodbye to you. I love you very much. See you tomorrow or the next day. Bye-bye.